Hello people, it's Landon here and I am back from Europe and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, my brain just exploded. Well, not literally, but obviously figuratively. had this like experience of a whole new continent and countries and everything and it's crazy. So I have a lot to cover. Um, I'll go into like little sections and like if you want to click on a certain part of the video because no doubt this video is gonna be super long and ridiculous. So we'll start off with my trip there. I took a plane from Regina to Calgary. Pretty normal flight full of Canadians but then I took the plane which is like a huge plane from Calgary to London, and all I gotta say was there's some seriously attractive Europeans. Like, oh my gosh, seriously? Like, Canadians, I feel like we're just kind of the kind of people that would just like throw on an item of clothing because it's warm and we won't die when it's cold. Whereas Europeans dress really well, and there was very few obese Europeans. It's like, whew, this kind of set the precedence of what the trip was gonna be like. Did a layover in London and then flew to Budapest. And yes, it's called Budapest, not Budapest like my previous video. And met my sister there and it was awesome and we were so ready to have our exciting adventure. So we go to our hostel and things are getting, things are pretty good here because the cab ride was a half an hour of doing 100 kilometers per hour on streets that were like not the kind of streets I would think you would do 100 kilometers per hour on. But we got there and it was $30 for the cab ride. Like honestly, my cab ride from my house to Regina Airport was more money. I was kind of like, ooh, I can get used to this. So we got to our hostel, kind of this like old building, really close together with other buildings and so forth. And so we go around, get into the floor that we need to get to. And the place is beautiful, super nice. I was like, wow, this is what hostel living is like. I could get used to this. So 12 bucks a night is what this hostel cost, really inexpensive. So we set up shop and whatever and get settled in. And then we decide to explore Budapest. And it's so cool, like it's just, it's so old and just designed so differently than Western Canada or North America at all. We went across that really famous green bridge and we went to some shops and stuff and yeah, I don't know, it was just, it was just a lot of like experience, um, you know, covered parking is like, let's take this corrugated whatever and put it over top of our cars. And the cars were also kind of interesting because they were all like geometros from the 90s, just kind of, you can tell it was a little bit poorer than Western Canada, obviously. We went to a museum and it was an art museum and it was really nice full of religious artwork and I studied religious artwork throughout my school career and it's one thing to see it in a textbook but it's a completely another thing to see it in person 20 feet tall like it's actually really scary I feel like religion was to like control the people with fear honestly based on the artwork then we did have sort of a bad experience we went to a restaurant and it was kind of it's like, you know how you play GoldenEye 007, and I think it's the stack level, um, where you're like, it, no, I think it's like the basement. That's what it is. It's like the basement. I don't know. It's some level. You're playing it, and there's like, you know, bullet holes, and like, it's all concrete, and there's like green paint and whatever. That's kind of what this restaurant was like. It was kind of creepy, except it was painted red and whatnot. So we get, we go down into this basement, and we have our meal. While we're having our meal, we have this like really aggressive violin player come in and like playing violin really like aggressively. And I was kind of like, oh, maybe he thinks that like I'm with my girlfriend. Obviously it's my sister. So I'm like, no, no, we're just brother and sister. And he's just like playing his video violin like crazy. And then I realize, oh, he's got like money in his violin. He wants us to tip him. So I like grab some 
you know, Hungarian coins, and my sister's like, Lana, you just tipped him, like, 50 cents, like, seriously. I'm like, I don't have any money! Like, I didn't expect some violinist to come and, like, attack me while I'm having my meal. So, after my sister gives him a little bit more money, um, he goes away, and we're having our meal, and it's kind of meh, like, it's not, like, a super nice meal, and all of a sudden the table behind us is, like, oh, you mother effing blah, 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 this is such a ripoff, whatever. And they're talking like a really scary Italian accent and whatever. So they like take off. Like, I don't even know if they walk out of their check or not. And I was kind of like really off pipe by it. I was like, okay. And my sister said to me, oh, you know, since we overheard that, maybe we should check our bill just to make sure that they don't like overcharge us for something or something like that by accident, right? We get our bill and the prices yeah, like it was $55 Canadian for this meal. And this is Hungary. It's not an expensive city to be in. And so we go over a bill and there's like a bunch of charges that we literally had like water and like an entree each. Like that's it. So turns out guy comes over and he's like, no, like there's a 15% service charge for both of your meals. And then there's also a... Uh, what was it? Um, so he also said that you have your entree, but then like, you know how you get like a side of potatoes or a side of corn or whatever? That's extra. And it was on like fine print of the menu. So I was like, well, that's kind of lousy. I mean, that's like a really kind of horrible way to do things. And we kind of thought, well, geez, like they're probably doing this to everybody. And that's why everybody in the restaurant is like unhappy. So my sister confronts this server of ours and he's like, I like to speak to the manager because this is not fair. We're backpackers and like, we can't afford this and you guys need to be more clear with your pricing and whatnot. And so our server's like, I am the manager and I'm gonna call the police if you don't pay up and whatnot. It was like really crazy. My sister actually like went into tears and at first I'm like, yes, we're gonna get like our meal, like we won't have to pay for it, right? But no, like they were absolutely adamant that we're gonna pay like everything, you know, even though we said like, we're gonna give you a bad review, they're like, we don't care, we want our money. It was just really seedy. So anywho, I like console my sister and I'm like, whatever, it's $55, I'll pay for it. And so I pay for it, we leave. And just as we're leaving, like we're telling people like, don't go to this restaurant, like, there's like, they don't treat people well. And then we actually look up the restaurants on Google and there's a TripAdvisor review and it's like 1.1 stars. Like everybody's had horrible experiences. We read a review that someone got hit on the head by the server, like what the hell? So my sister was really upset by this. And myself, I was like, okay, well, you know, it's hungry, like, they've only had capitalism for 30 years, right? So probably this is like newish to them and like some people think they can run businesses this way and whatnot and it is what it is. I can't let that experience, you know, determine what my experiences are going forward, right? I can't paint all of Hungary with a bad brush because of that one experience. So like I said, like our hostel was awesome. We had really good weather did some shopping. It was a cool experience. And then my sister wanted me to go visit her in Switzerland because her boyfriend's there. So she's like convincing me. She's like, okay, well, now that you've been in Budapest, you can come to us to Austria or whatnot. And it turns out that my dad has a cousin in Austria. So he was encouraging me to see family there. So I'm like, okay, whatever, we'll get a bus ticket. And it wasn't that expensive. So we took the bus from Budapest to Vienna and on the bus, my sister talks to this guy on the bus that's probably a little bit younger than me and had this like really cool conversation. He actually revealed that if you don't live in Budapest but you live in like rural Hungary, you only get paid 450 euro a month. Like that's really their average wage there. So it kind of put more emphasis that it's really not a wealthy country at least like on the mass I'm sure there's like wealthy people there but you know that's why it was so inexpensive for us is because you know the average person doesn't make that much there so 
we take the bus and we go to Vienna, which was really cool. So now, like, you're in Austria, right? So I don't think they, I don't know, were they ever communist? I have no idea, but it was just completely different. Much more modern vehicles. You have a lot more commercialism everywhere. And the buildings, it was so cool, because no matter where you walked, all the buildings were four stories tall and really close together, cobblestone streets, and just people everywhere. It kind of reminded, well not reminded me, it made me think this is what New York would be kind of like, just lots of people everywhere. So we get into our hostel. Hostel was more expensive, about $18 a day, and it wasn't as nice. The people were really good, really knowledgeable there, but Honestly, I like the Flow Hostel, is what it was called in Budapest. The Wombats in Vienna. It was nice, but personally, I like the Budapest one. So we stay in Vienna for quite a while. My sister actually has a friend there, so we hung out with her and her friends. And that was really something that was kind of, I don't know, kind of cool. When I was in Budapest, very few people spoke English you know, really broken English, and it was it was definitely a challenge. When you go to Vienna, everyone's like, I don't speak very good English, and then proceeds to speak excellent English. Like, seriously, you're not gonna have any issues speaking English in Vienna. So we go there, we hang out, whatnot. We decide to go visit my dad's cousin. Um, they live in Ilbitz, Ilsbit, I don't know, I'll put it here, I can't remember the name of the town, but they live in a town in Austria. So we decided to take the train to go visit them, and that was really cool, because now it's like small town living, and much more kind of what I'm used to in Regina, where everybody drives, everybody's got an individual house, you're not like all crammed together. Really neat architecture, it was cool meeting them, and the, it was funny because my dad's cousin, was like, oh, you're like one of those capitalist swine, you rent out real estate, oh my gosh, right? So it's just, she was kind of like tongue in cheek and poking fun, but yeah, I guess you're right. Like, if it was like communism, I'd be arrested because, oh my gosh, I rent out places for money. So after our visit there, we go back to Vienna and stay a couple more days. Then we decide, okay, we're gonna take the bus from Vienna to Zurich. I think that's how you pronounce it, Zurich? I don't know. Anyways, I call it Zurich, but apparently that's not how you pronounce it there. So we take the bus. Well, first of all, we order our tickets, which were like $100 each, so quite a bit more than the bus from Budapest to Vienna. But whatever, you know, we, it was cheaper than flying. We decide to get ready for our bus, and we go to the bus depot in Vienna, and our bus is like not showing up. We're like, what is going on? So we go to the bus depot and they have no information. We booked through Euro, it's called Eurolines. And they're like, yeah, Eurolines is all online. We don't deal with them. We don't touch them. We have no information on them. And we're like, what on earth? Like we just paid a hundred dollars each to go on this bus to go to Zurich. So thankfully we like stick around and 55 minutes later the bus finally shows up my sister's like it's here oh my gosh we're really excited we go up to the bus for like worshiping it right like canadian craziness we're like oh my gosh it's so good to see you and the bus driver is probably from switzerland or whatever and he had like no reaction he was like ticket please and like, this is late at night. So we get on the bus, you can hear a pin drop, like nobody's talking, very strange. And so my sister and I sit down and, we're, and my sister reveals to me that the reason why she wants me to go to Switzerland is because she's bored because people there are like, I don't know, they're just, they're not like Western Canadians who are crazy and zany and whatnot. They're very quiet and stoic. So my sister and I are like having these like inappropriate conversations on this bus and nobody else is talking. And so we're like laughing at the same time and whatnot. But anyways, we eventually fall asleep and then the bus stops, I guess for like a scheduled break for a half an hour or whatever. And the bus driver, I'm sleeping and he's like violently waking me up speaking to me in German, like, telling me to get off the bus. It's not what he said in English, but, like, that's, like, clearly what he wanted. So I get off the bus, 
And my sister is like, yeah, I just ordered an ice cream and like this like lady was screaming at me for something and she she wanted a signature, I guess, for a credit card and like, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this like what's happening in Switzerland? What on earth? So our first impression wasn't so great. We arrive in Switzerland, in Zurich, and meet my sister's boyfriend. My sister's boyfriend speaks German, so he's speaking to the train station because we need to get a train from Zurich to Lenk, Switzerland, which is where he is. It's like this, like, I don't know, resort town. And so he's speaking to him and they get a train ticket. It's a four day train ticket and it's $400 Canadian. Oh my gosh, you guys, Switzerland is so insanely expensive. It's $20 for a Whopper meal. It's like $8 for a hot chocolate. It's so insane. So anyways, we take the train and go to Link. My sister's boyfriend works at a restaurant. And so we're fortunate that we get to stay at his apartment for free. It's like, unless you like skiing, there's not much to do. Um, I mean, even the shopping is like really expensive. Like you just like, you can sightsee and that's about it. So. I took the opportunity, like I, I certainly took advantage of that train tickets. I went to Bern and I went to Thun and like all sorts of different cities and towns. And just, yeah, like I guess if you like snow and chalets, like help yourself. But it just, I don't know, like you can get that in Coppell Valley if you really want that. We stayed there for quite a while and like my sister and I were probably like wearing down her boyfriend because like we were kind of negative about Switzerland but like oh my god like <laughs> I mean you can go swimming instead of six dollars in Regina you're paying 40 like it's just nuts anywho after the whole Switzerland thing my sister thanked me she's like thank you because I'm like going a little bit stir crazy like when my boyfriend is out at work like I don't really I have nothing to do, so thanks for coming. After Switzerland, I get on a plane and I go to London and meet Jeff and his husband and their daughter, and it was really cool. And the thing with London is it kind of was exactly what I thought it would be. I guess I've seen so many episodes of Top Gear that it didn't, nothing really surprised me. It seemed really inexpensive after Switzerland. People were like, you think London's inexpensive? I'm like, hmm, I'm not paying $20 for a hamburger. I don't know, it was a really cool experience. Everything was walkable where Jeff was living. I did get sick, unfortunately. So there was like two days that I couldn't really do much of anything, but it was really cool. One thing, okay, so we gotta talk about this. I know this is like the end of the video and so forth, but I am a single guy and I have Grindr, so I went on to Grindr throughout my trip in Europe and I don't know, like I guess maybe Regina is different? I don't know. Every time I talk to guys on Grindr, they would want sex and that's it. Like they don't want to go out for coffee, they could care less of even what your name was. Like I truly felt like a piece of meat when I was in Europe and I guess like thinking about it, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I am a foreigner. Like, maybe people are just like, oh, I don't wanna like hang around this Canadian guy. Like, I'm gonna have to explain to people like how I know you or whatever. So maybe that was the thing. Another part of it could be that Regina is really small. We're only 200,000 people here. So you really can't be, I don't know. You don't wanna like look slutty, I guess, because you're gonna probably see these people on your day-to-day -day life, right? See them in an elevator, see them someplace, right? So I feel like in Regina, it's much more acceptable to like have conversation. Um, some people said like try Tinder. Tinder was exactly the same. I'm not even kidding you. Um, but yeah, like I always thought, you know, move to a big city, you're gonna be like a much higher opportunity to like meet your boyfriend or whatever and have a relationship. And it just was not like this. And like, I have a rental property in Regina. There's nothing to stop me from being like, hey, I'll like, you know, have a boyfriend in a different continent and just let this place run itself. I'm not gonna like, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand why everybody was like, give me sex and that's it. It was just weird. I will say that I did not have sex in Europe. I think number one was like, if I had an STD, like how, like, embarrassing first of all but not only that 
like how would I get like any kind of medical attention when like people can barely speak English in some places so anywho so I'm proud of myself I didn't like whore myself out but at the same time I'm really happy I'm back in Canada um, also I kind of like bigger guys so Canada is kind of more my thing anyway so anyways that's kind of like a weird way to end it but yeah flew back to Regina and my trip was really inexpensive I spent about two thousand dollars over 20 days including flights like super cheap flights if you can you know be flexible as to like when you want to go and like the layovers and stuff so that was my experience and yeah Seriously, would I go back? Would I go back to, I don't know, I you know, maybe visit Jeff, but maybe, I don't know. Like, I did like Budapest because it was so cheap. That's, like, really. That's how you make Landon happy, is, like, make things inexpensive and he'll have a good time. Anyways. And also, while I was in Europe, I did not get a vehicle. I know I was kind of talking about maybe buying a car, um, especially because in Hungary they're so inexpensive there. But it just all came down to language. I was kind of concerned that, like, you know, if it's really difficult to speak to people in Hungarian or whatever, you know, I don't want to be in a situation where I get ripped off or don't know how insurance laws work or, like, heaven forbid, some police officer pulls me over, whatever. And their gas, really expensive, about $2 a liter. It's twice as expensive there than it is in Canada. So we just trained everywhere and took flights and buses and it was fine. So that was my whole Europe experience, and I'll keep you guys updated with more videos, lots of more developments, but we'll get into that later. Anyways, we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.